It's time for Mornings at 8 with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Oh, yes, it is time for Mornings at 8 right here on WLEA. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. You know, I think, as I said, the best thing that can be said for Tuesday is at least it's not Monday again. So that's a good deal. Uh, work week began yesterday, and now we're right in the heart of the work week. Because when you think of it, Wednesday, we're halfway through the week. So really, the only real serious day is Tuesday. But I think if we work as a team, we will get through this thing. Uh, Tuesday, Tuesday. You know, I was thinking the word Tuesday. Do you remember the act? It was an actress, I think, in the 50s or 60s, Tuesday Weld. Tuesday Weld. I don't remember what she was in, but I remember the name. And I was thinking, what an odd name, Tuesday. And then I was thinking, let's see, I can't think of anybody named Monday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. Now, there was a Joe Friday, but he was in Dragnet a long time ago. That was the character's name. Or Saturday or Sunday. So I guess Tuesday, there you go. Nice name, really. You know, I was thinking that, you know, at least it's not Monday. But I'll tell you, if it was as nice as yesterday was, if Tuesday was as nice as Monday, it'd be a good thing. Because yesterday was an absolutely gorgeous day. I think it was probably spring in western New York at its best. In greater metropolitan in Almond, where I live, we had a high of 72. Blue skies... Nice clouds, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous day. Nice day for working in the yard, working in the garden, mowing the lawn. Uh, a lot of people were mowing their lawns yesterday. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful day. So if it was as good as Monday, it'd be okay on a Tuesday. And mowing the lawn, you know, mowing the lawn is a real experience. It's a time for contemplation, mowing the lawn. I love mowing the lawn. And the smell of new mo- of a new mown lawn is beautiful. It's a delightful smell. It smells like a uh, new mown lawn smells like spring or summer. It smells clean, new beginnings, and it lasts about maybe a day and then it dies down again. But boy, a, a freshly mowed lawn is just gorgeous. And also, when you mow the lawn, I was thinking, yes, I, I mowed the lawn. Could you tell? Anyway, so I mowed the lawn and it's relaxing. It's instant gratification. It's like when you paint a wall. Let's say you're redecorating and you're painting a wall. So first you do the trim around the, you know, around the edges, and then you take out the roller and you roll the, the a wall. And it's instant gratification. You've just painted a wall, and it's right there. There's no process involved. Uh, there's no waiting to see what the results are going to be. I mean, there it is right smack in front of you. And mowing the lawn is pretty much the same thing. You mow the lawn, and there it is. You've accomplished something. Brian wants to say something. It kind of looks like you. You were just talking about uh, people, uh, an actress named Tuesday, and there's nobody named Monday. Is there? Uh, A listener Uh just uh, sent us a Facebook message saying there was a girl named Wednesday from the Adams family. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. Tuesday and Wednesday. (laughs) Diddle itty. Boom, boom. Uh, Yeah. Little Wednesday, that's right. Uh, anyway, so that's mowing the lawn, and that's how I feel about mowing lawns. Anyway, it's instant gratification. Anyway, it looks more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, a lawn that's mowed looks a whole bunch better than a lawn that is unkempt. And the property owners who take care of their lawns and their gardens, I mean, it's really nice. It's pleasing on the eye. When you let your lawn go to seed and it looks like a hayfield or something, that's no good. So it's always, I think, a good idea to try to take care of your lawn. Like, you live there, you might as well make it look as nice as possible. Okay, plus, let me see. I was going to do this at the end of the program, and he said, no, I'll do it at the beginning, because every time I plan on doing it at the end, I don't remember, and it's gone. But when I started the show, um, Fridays at 8 started in January, I think. And I was giving my email address at the end of the show. And then I ran into a whole bunch of problem with my email, and it was muggled up for quite some time. But now it's up and running again. It's fine. There's no glitches anymore. It's fine. So if anyone would like to email me, and I really do appreciate getting email. It's kind of fun. I like I like a little bit of feedback. That's fun. Even if you don't like the show, that's fine. Hey, you know, I don't care. Um, I'm tough. I could take it. But if you'd like to email me, 
my email address is, and this is up and running now, studio1227, studio1227 at twc.com. Studio1227twc.com. And that's the email address. And somebody asked me the other day, well, that's a really odd email. Studio1227, how did you come up with 1227? Well, there's a reason for it. My wife and I had our first date two days after Christmas, years ago. So 1227, right? Christmas is on the 25th. We had our first date 1227. So I figured, hmm, that's probably the most important date of, in my entire life. So the email address is studio1227. That's, and that's that. Now, I don't know how many people are into Game of Thrones. Apparently about three quarters of the planet is watching this series on HBO called Game of Thrones. I personally am not. I watched one episode and I said, no, it's not really, I don't know. It just didn't really seem all that interesting, but I'll, boy, I guess I'm in a minority there because everybody watches this Game of Thrones thing. It's about, uh, near as I could tell, I don't know what it was, but these people are running around like they're dressed in medieval costumes or something, and that's really about all, it, it's like the, the, the Hobbit or something. I, I don't know what it is, but it's apparently it's a really, really big deal on HBO. It's been running for years and years, and this, I guess, is the last season of Game of Thrones. Now, my wife is into Game of Thrones. But my Game of Thrones is on. I just walk out of the room. I'll do something else. I just, I don't watch it. As I said, I watched one episode and I just, it didn't really hold my interest. So, there was a story in Variety this morning, right? This morning, or maybe it was yesterday. Possibly it was yesterday. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> apparently, <laughs> we have to be reminded every now and then, that the stories and movies we see on TV, or in the movies, they're pretend. It's let's pretend, let's make believe, this is all make believe, it's all pretend. What you see on the screen is the story that, the, the story that somebody has written, okay? And these actors are acting and they do this and that, but they're real people and they're acting. And to remind us of that, uh, let me see, this was from Variety this morning or last night. Uh, HBO made fun of itself after eagle-eyed Game of Thrones viewers spotted a modern-day coffee cup in last night's episode, which, of course, was Sunday. Uh, let me see. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Here it is. For about two seconds in Sunday's The Last of the Starks, I guess that was the name of the episode, a takeout, a takeout coffee cup appeared on a table in front of, oh boy, uh, <laughs> I really ought to pre-read this, Daenerys Targaryen. Daenerys Targaryen. It looks like a one huge typo, but anyway, that's his character's name apparently. I guess, I guess it's a woman or something, Daenerys Targaryen. Anyway, uh, a coffee cup appeared on the table in front of her around at the 17 minute and 40 second mark. Based on the size and shape, many fans assumed it was a Starbucks cup. And the hashtag Starbucks trended on Twitter after the episode. So in, uh, let me see, <laughs> in her email to Variety Game of Thrones art director, Hawk Richter said it's not uncommon for items to end up misplaced on set go unnoticed and appear in the final cuts of movies and TV shows. He says, uh, things can't get forgotten on set, he wrote. The coffee cup error has been so blown out of proportion because it has not happened with Thrones so far, but apparently Sunday night it did. And so there we are. And what's this? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, there was a photograph along with the story, and clearly, I mean, there is a takeout coffee cup on the table, which they probably didn't have in whatever time period this, this may possibly have taken place. So, after the tragic ending to the episode, Daenerys might need some more coffee to keep her wired for the upcoming battle between her forces and Queen... Yeah, Queen the Cersei's at King's Landing. The penultimate episode of the series airs this Sunday. And penultimate means next to the last. So, apparently this thing has like two more ep episodes, and uh, there we go. So... Where was it? 
HBO had a sense of humor about this. And you got to appreciate this. You really do. Uh, the uh, press release stated, The latte that appeared in the episode was a mistake. The nearest had ordered an herbal tea. So there you go. That's HBO and the Game of Thrones. And, you know, and, you know, as I say, especially when you're watching, let's say, um, uh, a horror mo a, a movie or something. We have to remember that these are actors and they're acting. And what you see is a story that, you know, they want you to see. But behind you is all these people involved, all these technicians and all these uh, stagehands and all that stuff. But what you're watching on the TV screen is unreal. It's unreal. It's, and then you think the popularity of television and movies, you have to appreciate the writing involved. Because people get so much into these these series. I mean, you're really into that series. And so that's a sign of good writing. They make you keep watching the, these shows. And that, that's that's really, really good writing. Speaking of which, <laughs> long-running shows, uh, what's the name of that thing? Some uh, Days of Our Lives. Now, Days of Our Lives, I think, has been running for, oh, maybe, what, 100 years? Maybe 150 years? And it's a soap opera. And some people, like, I know another person who's really serious in the days of our lives. And this Game of Thrones, from what I gather, is like days of our lives, only with chain mail and swords. It's a long-running soap opera set in some mystical place or something. I don't know. So there we have that. Now, this, this is uh, that's totally unimportant. This is important. And I found this on the Daily News. One Ring Robocall Scam Targeting New York and Arizona Area Codes, FCC Warrants. And the story in the Daily News goes, Don't return that middle-of-the-night phone call if your cell phone only rang once. Which, I think of it now, we have a cell phone and a landline, and we got a lot of calls on our landline where it rings only once. But anyway, uh, the FCC has alerted consumers about a wave of One Ring Robocalls after detecting widespread overnight calling in both New York and Arizona. The scam calls, also known as Wangiri, which is Japanese for a one ring and drop, are an attempt to trick customers into phoning the number back. So you figure, well, let me see, uh, somebody called me, I wonder who it is, maybe I'll call them back, and oops, if you do, it says here, it can result in getting billed toll charges as though you called a 900 number. And the press release goes on, generally the one ring scam takes place when a robocaller calls a number and hangs up after a ring or two, the FCC says. They may call repeatedly, hoping the customer or the consumer calls back and runs up a toll that is largely paid to the scammer. According to the FCC, the callers are using the 222 co uh, country code, which is the code, the code of Mauritania. And that's the nation in West Africa to carry out their scheme. In addition to not returning the phone call, officials encourage people against calling back numbers they don't recognize. I never do that. I ever, ever, ever. Especially if they appear to be international. And if you don't typically receive international calls, which I don't, uh, block all phone calls coming from outside the country, the FCC said. And consumers are also urged to file a complaint if they've been targeted in the scam and to keep an eye out for charges on their phone bill that they do not recognize. Now, generally speaking, how many people actually read their phone bill? Right. Here's the bill. Here's the bottom line. You pay it and that's it. So it pays to go over your phone bill. So you don't want to do that. So it's right. One ring and hang up. And if it rings once, especially overnight, because chances are you're not by your cell phone overnight. So you wake up in the morning, you see a missed call, you call it back, and bingo, okay, you're charged. Okay, let me see, what else? Oh, <laughs> here's from uh, The Hill. Trump's approval rating hits all-time high in Gallup poll. And with all the negative news, a constant barrage, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, negative news about Trump, apparently his rating is at an all-time high. So, so go figure. Uh, President Trump's approval rating reached new heights in the second half of April, according to the Gallup poll, as nearly half of voters gave him positive marks. Nearly half. Trump's approval rating ticked up to 46 percent, 
up slightly from 45 in the first part of April, and the highest mark to date for Trump in the Gallup poll. And it says uh, this comes on the heels of strong economic numbers and a largely favorable outcome of the Russian investigation. Remember that? <laughs> That's right, it just keeps going on and on and on and on. Uh, Trump remains overwhelmingly popular among Republicans, 91% of whom gave the president positive marks in the latest Gallup poll. And the figure falls just short of the record high of 92 among GOP respondents in November of 2018. Among Democrats, 12% said they approve of Trump's job performance, according to the poll. And anyway, so his, his numbers are up. And when was this? Uh, let me see. <laughs> let me see. The gross domestic product grew at an annual rate of 3.2% in the first quarter of 2019, exceeding expectations. And other than, as I said, other than what you, you know, hear about in the mainstream media, you would think that his approval numbers would be like, like zero. So <laughs> the media says one thing and the reality is another. <laughs> Remember the Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, so you have the media's viewpoint and then you have what's really real and, you know, you, the people who count. That's what's really important. And where else? We have a related story and we're probably coming up on a break. We'll be back after these words from our sponsor. New to golf or seasoned veteran? You'll enjoy the casual, relaxed atmosphere of Vanderview Golf Course. Two miles from downtown Alfred on Waterwells Road, Vanderview is a nine-hole, executive-length golf course with a driving range on one side of the road and the course on the other. Family-friendly and fun recreation for everyone. Greens fees are one price for unlimited play, $9.50. High school students, only $5. Children, 12 and under, with an adult no charge you can play up to 18 holes or nine holes with a cart and get the second nine holes at no additional charge ladies and senior golfers who don't hit the long ball vanderview's got the executive length that's just right for your game and new this year a season pass for only 100 dollars. that's a lot of golfing fun for a very little bit of money vanderview golf course two miles from downtown alfred on waterwells road vanderview golf course From the Fox Business Network, Anna Darko says Occidental Petroleum's offer to buy the company is now worth more than Chevron's bid. Chevron has four business days to come up with a better offer. If Anna Darko ends the Chevron deal, it will owe Chevron a billion dollar breakup fee. BMW's auto business lost money at the start of the year. The Wall Street Journal says it set aside more than one and a half billion dollars in the quarter to potentially cover a fine from European regulators. BMW denies the allegations that it colluded with Daimler and Volkswagen to prevent competition in emissions technology. Global markets are mixed after China said its vice premier will visit Washington for trade talks this week. The Dow dropped 66 yesterday. NASDAQ was down 40. The S&P lost 13. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. Mother's Day is this Sunday, and Pro Flowers is offering an amazing special. One dozen assorted roses for $19.99. Plus, get double the roses with a premium vase for just $9.99 more. Pick your delivery date and send mom a dozen assorted roses for just $19.99. Or double the roses and get a premium glass vase for $9.99 more. To get this amazing deal, hurry to proflowers.com. Click on the microphone in the upper right corner and enter the secret code 5757. Proflowers.com, code 5757. Selecting a nursing home for a loved one isn't easy until you've discovered Hornell Gardens Nursing and Rehabilitation. Hornell Gardens delivers the highest level of care, compassion, and commitment with amenities and activities that will enrich body, mind, and spirit. It's a place that's close to home. Stop in for a tour of Hornell Gardens located at 434 Monroe Avenue in Hornell or to learn more, call 585-222-CARE or visit hurlbuttcare.com. And back we are. Now, uh, I just mentioned the latest Gallup poll and how President Trump's approval ratings are pretty, pretty up there. Uh, I was going to mention that the same time in his presidency, if I could find it here, the same time in his presidency, President Obama's rating at this point was 44%, and Trump's is 46 
So there you go. And speaking of poll, you know, we don't... <laughs> remember the polls in 2016? Speaking about <laughs> fiction and, you know, fact? Uh, yeah. So that's... Uh, polls really don't really mean a whole bunch because they sure didn't in 2016. Anyway, a uh, new poll shows, this is from The Hill, former Vice President Joe Biden has a 32-point lead in the Democrat presidential race in a Hill-Harris X poll, and that was released on Monday, which was yesterday. Biden won 46% in the poll compared to 14 for Bernie Sanders. 46 to 14, that's quite a big margin. Uncle Joe. And uh, let me see, there, there are, the Democrat field is so incredibly crowded, just about what the Republican field was in uh, 2016. Biden had 46. Bernie Sanders had 14. And then we have former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg was in third place with eight, followed by Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts with seven. So then we go, going uh, in descending order from there, we have Kamala Harris, Beto O'Rourke, Cory Booker, Tulsi Gabbard, Julian Castro, John Delaney, Kirsten Gillibrand from New York here, uh, Michael Bennett, followed by Tim Ryan, entrepreneur Andrew Yang, haven't even heard of, heard of him, hmm, okay, author Marianne Williamson, Governor Jay Inslee of Washington, let me see, uh, Congressman Eric S uh, Swalwell, Senator Amy Klobuchar, former Governor John Hickenlooper of Colorado, Wayne Messam, the mayor of Miramar, Florida, and then way at the back of the pack is Seth Moulton, a congressman from Massachusetts, and former Senator Mike Gravel of Alaska. So that's how the Democrats are shaping up in their, in their race. And you know, the, really, the 2020 election, or the 2020 campaign, began in 2016. I mean, as soon as Trump won, the 2020 election campaign started. I mean, like right then. So the campaign is going to be going on for four years. And, you know, it's kind of funny because every time I think of the, uh, the Democrat candidates, this, thing, this song is going through my head. Remember the Adams Family? They're creepy and they're, uh, they're, creepy and they're spooky, mysterious and kooky. And that's kind of what I think of when I think of the Democrat candidates for president. So a anyway, I did hear, I think it was two weeks ago, on the Brian Kilmeade show, somebody mentioned that right now there are more, get this, there are more than 600 people running for president. 600 people across the country have declared their candidacy for the, for, for the presidency in, in 2020. More than 600. Now, some of those people, you know, I'm sure have some pretty whacked out programs. I mean, you've never heard of these people, you know. They, some of them have pretty weird agendas. Like, get this, one of them is calling for free college tuition. Huh, for everyone? One's calling for Medicare, free Medicare for everyone. Oh, wait a minute, that's, that's Bernie Sanders. That's right, I, for, I forgot. Uh, let me see. Oh, speaking of uh, candidates here, now, a number of shows ago, I kind of made fun in a very lighthearted way of Kirsten Gillibrand, who really seems like a really nice person, and she's kind of intelligent, and who knows, maybe she'd make a nice president. I, I don't know. Uh, probably out of all the candidates, she seems like the nicest one. Although being nice does not necessarily qualify you to be president, but she seems like a pretty good person. And she was in Nashua, New Hampshire recently, and she was playing beer pong. I mean, how's that for being cool? Uh, her, it says here, where is it from? This is from AP. A dateline is Nashville, New Hampshire, duh. Her first shot landed short, and her teammates bounced away. But Kirsten Gillibrand's second ping-pong ball splashed home, and she threw both arms skyward while her opponents chugged, celebrating a beer pond victory in the most presidential way possible. So she seems, she seems like a pretty good person. She's also, let me see, she's played the foosball and baked cookies, armed wrestled, arm wrestled, and hung out with drag queens. So, I don't know, but she seems like a pretty cool candidate. I don't know. So, who knows? As I said, out of all the Democrat candidates, she kind of seems like the nicest. And so, I suppose that's it for 
this edition of Mornings at 8. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.